Next on ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso Weekend, the deadline to enroll in health care is fast approaching. How El Pasoans are preparing. And in the sports world, a big win on the road yesterday for the UTEP men's basketball team. And after a six-game losing streak, the women's basketball team also gets a win. We have all the highlights for you. And in storm track weather, Dan. All right, get ready because we could be seeing possible record-breaking temperatures later this week. I'll go over that with you coming up in storm track weather. It's all the news you need to start your Sunday, February 8th at 2015. ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso Weekend starts now. Live, where news comes first. From the Mesilla Valley and Las Cruces to El Paso and the Borderland. This is ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso Weekend. Good morning and thanks for joining us on this Sunday morning. I'm Josie Ortegon. Let's get right to storm track weather now with Dan Martinez. Dan, we got reports of an earthquake last night near Las Cruces. That's right, yeah. The U.S. Geological Survey reported two seismic uh, areas in the area near Las Cruces. I want to show you what I'm talking about right now. Deming, between Deming and Las Cruces, uh, north of I-10, two areas there, as you see, there's two dots. They're practically laid over each other because they're very close. But the maximum magnitude was a 4.0 earthquake. We also saw one of a 3.0 earthquake. Not exactly sure how long they lasted. And we did ask people on Facebook last night and this morning, and we read through some of the comments. Nobody really felt anything, though. That's the, the strange part in all this. But nonetheless, reported by the U.S. Geological Survey. And, well, as far as our weather is concerned, we are also tracking our next Pacific system. It's uh, moving through the Bay Area right now, affecting San Francisco. And, well, our temperatures, that's the main story we've been seeing the last few days. Definitely warmer than what we're used to seeing for February. 47 right now, El Paso, 43 Las Cruces. Calm winds right now and that 50% humidity. 53% in Las Cruces as far as humidity is concerned. And 47 degrees. As far as what you can expect for the rest of your day today, well, those sunny skies definitely. And temperatures right around 66 degrees at noon. Coming up, we'll talk about the possibility again of breaking records with these temperatures coming up. Josie? Okay, thanks, Dan. New this morning, El Paso police are asking for your help in finding a man they say burglarized a central El Paso home. Police say this happened on Thursday, January 8th. The man you see here forced himself into a kitchen window at a home on the 5900 block of Texas. Investigators say once inside the home, he began to take items and fill a trash can. The suspect took more than $3,000 worth of electronic items. Police say the suspect is described as a male, possibly Hispanic. Police say he's about 5 feet 7 inches to 5 feet 9 inches tall with an average build. He has tattoos on his biceps. He was wearing a dark color t-shirt, blue jeans, and white tennis shoes. Anyone with information is asked to call Crime Stoppers of El Paso. Their number is 566-8477. And the deadline to enroll in affordable health care plans is about a week away. Get Covered America is one of the nation's leading health care enrollment groups, and they're holding several events around town helping people sign up for insurance. ABC 7's Jerry Nakira has more. Next week, a lot of people might be thinking about Valentine's Day, but we are here to remind you the deadline to enroll for affordable health care is on the 15th. Al principio fue un poco de temor. Abraham Ponce, a Mexican national, tells me when he was thinking about enrolling for health care, it scared him. Ponce was worried about dealing with a complicated process. Muchos documentos. A lot of documents and information he wasn't familiar with, Ponce says. And that's exactly where Get Covered America comes in. We were able to assist more than 100 you know, families and or individuals. Monica Gaitan is a representative for Get Covered America. She tells me the staff sits down with those interested in affordable health care and gives them free assistance. Gaitan says they help answer any questions and also find out how much financial assistance may be available to help people pay for their monthly premiums. El personal se tomó de su tiempo y de Ponce tells me the staff was very knowledgeable. They took their time and were very friendly in assisting him. But the staff wants to remind everyone you can't be helped unless you bring the right paperwork. You need a form of ID, a social security or a state issued ID, even a passport can be used. You also need to bring your W-2 form or your last three paycheck stubs. And if you have another form of insurance like Medicare or CHIP, you'll want to bring that paperwork in as well. Afortunadamente este año sí logré... Once it tells me this year he was able to enroll in a affordable health care plan. Fueron muy modicos. And they had modest prices, Ponce adds. But for those who decide to go without a health care plan, there is a penalty. This year, if they don't enroll before the fifth, uh, February 15th, next year the penalty will go up to 2% or about uh, $325 per person. Con un peso de en, en menos de encima. 
With a big smile, Ponce says he feels a weight lifted, knowing now he's covered with a health care plan. Now, when this story aired earlier, a few viewers asked, how is it possible a Mexican national enrolled in the health care plan? I asked Gaitan, who you saw in the story there, and she tells me any lawfully present immigrants are allowed to enroll in the health care plan. Get Covered America will be having two more enrollment events today at Victory Warriors. That's at 4601 Hondo Pass from 1 to 4, and on Monday at El Paso Community College Northwest Campus in the library, and that will be from 2 to 7. Reporting for Good Morning El Paso Weekend, I'm Jerry Najera. Thank you, Jerry. Meanwhile, a key group of Republicans are attempting to replace the president's Affordable Care Act. Officials say the replacement would provide tax credits to help lower income individuals and families purchase insurance. The coverage requirement would be eliminated. The White House has warned these efforts to dismantle the law will be vetoed. The bill also directs House committees to begin work on an alternative plan in case the Supreme Court rules a key portion of the law is unconstitutional. And there are no confirmed cases of measles in El Paso, but other cities are taking extra precautions. The University of California announced it will require more vaccinations for all incoming students. UC will now require vaccinations against measles, mumps, chickenpox, tetanus, and whooping cough. The plan will be phased in over three years. And administrators say the need is now more pressing than ever. And newly proposed legislation may force more Texas parents to vaccinate their kids. Andrea Lucia reports. Nine-year-old Amara insists she likes vaccinations. You're okay with getting a shot? Yes. Some of her classmates' parents may not. I have a couple of good friends who have opted to not because they worry about the autism. And State Representative Jason Bialba is proposing to bar public school students from opting out for personal or religious reasons. We're trying to just make sure that if you want to send your kids to public school, that you're going to get them properly immunized so you don't bring these diseases to the school. There are a little bit more every year. The number of kids voluntarily opting out of immunization statewide has tripled in six years. School districts track each one. Should we get um, a, a kind of um, infectious disease like measles, that we would know who they are and they would have to be excluded from school. Take a look. North Texas school districts last year had fewer than 2% of students opting out. The numbers were higher at private schools, where as many as 13% were unvaccinated. Vialba's bill wouldn't affect them. Private schools currently have their own protocols in place. They can do what they want. And for students who can't afford private school, they can homeschool, well, which doesn't cost anything. Sarah Bravo isn't sure how she feels. It's because, you know, I think the government has their hands in too many things and they're trying to control too much. But then on the other hand, I would want them to because then, you know, everybody's safe. So it's, it's kind of one of those catch 22s. And that was Andrea Lucia reporting. We have some traffic closures you want to be aware of this week. First, Gateway West between Don Haskins Drive and Henry Brennan Drive will be closed tomorrow at 8 a.m. And that closure will be in place until 4 p.m. The I-10 westbound exit ramp at Don Haskins will also be closed in that area. Also tomorrow at 9 a.m. until 4 p.m. Friday, east and westbound lane closures will take place at different times throughout the day on Socorro Street between Alton Griffin Street and South Old Pueblo Road. Crews will be working on the ADA ramps project. And starting tomorrow night at 9 p.m. until 6 a.m. Friday, I-10 east and westbound lanes will be closed between the Schuster overpass and the Porfirio Diaz overpass. Crews will be installing a center concrete barrier, barrier along with rebuilding shoulders on the interstate. And in Las Cruces, crews will be working on a $15.6 million project that's going to be replacing the overpass on I-25 near Missouri Avenue. Northbound lanes will be limited to one lane. Southbound lanes are going to be open as usual. So just give yourself some extra time if you're going to be in those areas this week. And in international news, more bodies have been recovered from AirAsia Flight 8501. Seven bodies were found in the Java Sea on Friday and Saturday. That brings the total number of bodies found to 100. It's believed one of the bodies recently recovered is that of the pilot. The bodies were taken to a hospital. The AirAsia flight went down on December 28th with 162 people on board. Two big storms, one on each coast out west, a second bout of extreme weather bearing down on the already drenched northwest. And in the east, it's hard to believe, but New England is about to endure another massive blast of snow. ABC's Aditi Roy has more.
This morning, both coasts bracing for another wallop of extreme weather. In the west, nearly six inches of rain expected in already storm ravaged areas. Neighbors rushing to clean up downed trees and power lines from Friday's storm before the next one hits. Take a look at the roots of this 90 foot pine tree here in Berkeley, California. Feels massive just standing next to it. It fell on three homes, but luckily, no one was hurt. The east coast bracing for another round of snow and Freezing rain that could break records in parts of New England. The weather system threatening to bring at least a foot of snow. These patterns of just snow week after week after week because it hasn't been like this in ages, right? It doesn't seem like it. Is there a danger of snow fatigue? I think so, yeah. <laughs> it's only February. January 26th to 27th, a powerful storm brought more than two feet of snow in spots. On Monday, some areas received more than a foot of snow. And now we are expected to get over another foot of snow on top of it all. Here in Northern California, the rain is expected to start in a few hours and last through the day. Aditi Roy, ABC News, Sacramento, California. Still ahead on ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso weekend, strong winds causing car crashes, power outages, and damage to homes. We'll show you where coming up. Also here in the Borderland, Cathedral High School held their annual nun run yesterday. We'll take a look coming up. Time now is 8-11. Let's take a live look at traffic this morning. We haven't heard of anything major on the roads just yet, so if you're out on the road this Sunday morning, you're good to go. And Hey, if you have any outdoor plants, it's going to be a great day. Right, Dan? Definitely, especially if you're a fan of the warmer conditions. How long will that stick around? We'll be talking about that coming up after the break. You're watching ABC7, where news comes first. You're watching ABC7's Good Morning El Paso Weekend with Josie Ortegon and Storm Track Weather with Dan Martinez.